Okay, uh, I will ask Mirta, can you hear us? Good afternoon, everybody. I can hear you loud and clear. Great. Well, welcome to this briefing. I unfortunately have to go to meet with the mm -hmm. boss, but my colleague Florencia will moderate. Uh, but thank you again, and, um, and thank you for all the work that you and your team are doing in Mozambique. But we'll give you the floor to make some opening remarks and then take some questions. Thank you. Thank you, Stefan. Good seeing you. Can I start now, oh, or should ahead. I wait? No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Well, thank you very much, and thank you very much for, uh, for this opportunity. Uh, to speak about uh, about Mozambique, and, um, and I'd like to say that as a, as a seven, I mean, storm, uh, Eloisa hit Mozambique uh, in the night uh, between well on Saturday, and as as we are now doing uh, doing the assessments, and so the figures are getting higher. Uh, yesterday, we were mentioning 170,000 people assess, um, affected. Today, the official figures have climbed to 250,000 people affected, out of which 18,000 are internally displaced. Uh, we have uh, worrying figures about uh, uh, health centers uh, uh, that are also affected and damaged, uh, like 76 health centers uh, and 400 classrooms. Uh, now, in a period of COVID, where health centers are even more important and classrooms are even more required because of the need to multiply shifts to reduce the number of students in one classroom, this is a, a, a very, very big uh, uh, problem. We also see widespread floods that are still there, and what we can see is uh, uh, a lot of people trying still to get out of the flooded uh, areas. Basically, uh, this is really a very bad uh, wake-up call of how much Mozambique is exposed to, to climate, uh, and uh, this yearly uh, rendezvous with uh, the cyclonic season is is just too frequent uh, for uh, recovery to to progress uh, there is simply not much time uh, so um i mean and i would like to flag this because it's really the two years since Cyclone Idai devastated exactly the same areas that are now uh, that were affected end of december by tropical storm shalan then floods uh, a week, 10 days ago, and then uh, tropical, uh, tropical storm Eloise. And uh, we are just at the beginning of the cyclonic season. The cyclonic season will continue into April, and, um, and the waters in the Mozambican channels are very warm. And Mozambique has 2,700 kilometers of coast, so you can see how much this is really a threat. I visited between Shalan and um, and Louisa. I visited uh, the areas uh, um, affected, and I, I met with people. And my, I must say, it is really heartbreaking because they were really making progress uh, uh, with their crops. So they were making progress with rebuilding their houses, uh, uh, but they you could see how still they're. Their household economies were, were affected. How I mean, they, these are very poor people that had become even poorer because of uh, because of the diet and were struggling. And now there is this blow uh, back, which is uh, which is also made uh, made worse by by the compounded presence now of uh, of COVID. Uh, we see really the challenge, uh, um, the the spacing in the shelters. Uh, uh, it is hardly possible, and uh, we are in a moment now during at which also in uh, in Mozambique the spread of uh, of COVID uh, is uh, is is augmenting has increased uh, really very very much in the last um, in the last weeks I would say in in the whole month of. Um, of uh, January, we are now at uh, a total of some 34,000 people uh, affected, which is uh, uh, lower compared to many other countries, of course, 
but uh, the increase in the last uh, uh, in the last weeks especially in the um, in the southern part of the country and in the capital mozambique uh, has led uh, uh, hospitals to come close to uh, maximum uh, capacity and is uh, of of great concern so the country has now stricter uh, measures uh, against uh, against COVID uh, and and the movement of humanitarian personnel is also uh, made more uh, more difficult. Uh, nonetheless, as I, I think, what we need to really see is uh, the um, the very good behavior of populations uh, who went to shelters, who evacuated, who listened to the alerts uh, to, to much larger numbers than in, in previous uh, occasions. Uh, the um, the uh, National um, Civil Protection, the Disaster Management uh, Agency um, has been de has deployed uh, on the spot in Beira before the cyclone and, uh, and is there throughout. We see Prime Minister, high-level official, uh, visiting really the, the most affected areas uh, and, and being present and communicating to the population. As United Nations and the whole humanitarian community, we are working uh, together with the institutions, uh, be it in the coordination as well as in the assessment, and of course we are providing assistance. The first assistance that is really needed is tents, blankets, water, hygiene, sanitation, and um, and food. But we are extremely worried at uh, the very low level of our capacity as international humanitarian community on the ground. Uh, we are very worried because uh, um, if so far we've made it, somehow to respond, but already now we see the increasing needs coming out caused by, uh, by, uh, by Tropical Storm Eloise, and, and we're worried about, uh, about the next uh, weeks, uh, uh, really. Plus, uh, we, we shouldn't forget that climate is also affect, is affecting throughout the whole country, so not just the center. Uh, Beira, Sofala, uh, Manica, Zambezia, where uh, Shalan and Eloise uh, uh, hit or die, but also in the north. Uh, two years ago, uh, Cyclone uh, Kenneth went uh, across the province of Cabo Delgado, which uh, uh, since then has experienced a, 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 a never increasing, uh, very complex uh, humanitarian crisis because of violence, because of presence of uh, uh, non-state armed groups and large, large displacement caused by that. Uh, I would like to remind that just end of December, as humanitarian community, together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs, we launched uh, a humanitarian plan for 2021 for a total value of 20, 254 million US dollars to assist one 1.1 million people in the northern province of Cabo Delgado plus Nampula and Nyasa, the other two bordering provinces. And out of this 1.1 million people, half of them are internally displaced and half of them are host communities. The um, internally displaced have really lost everything and need to start their lives uh, from scratch. They are hosted uh, uh, with an amazing display of generosity by uh, local populations in other districts, mainly in uh, in uh, the southern part uh, of, uh, of Cabo Delgado, which is still very safe. Uh, but these people, the host communities, are also extremely poor. So it's really sharing the barely minimum that households are, are having. And, and uh, this appeal is aiming at providing um, immediate humanitarian assistance as well as uh, uh, to help government plans uh, to create better areas for people to settle and, uh, and become self-reliant and alleviate the pressure on host communities. Um, Climate is affecting this area as well. It is already raining very much in uh, the southwestern part of Cabo Delgado. So uh, this displacement, uh, this very fragile situation is becoming even more critical. The uh, main towns uh, are really 
packed with people also uh, and uh, and this is making the situation even more difficult for cholera i mean more easy for cholera to spread we have a cholera outbreak right now and compounded with the water conditions we really are extremely worried um as i said so this is uh, a, a all to say that for Mozambique, we really need to be able to do many things at the same time. Uh, we need to look at the complex emergency in the north and respond to that. At the same time, we need to focus on climate resilience and support the country being uh, more resilient to climate. And we need to look at its way towards uh, uh, sustainable development. Uh, the vaccination campaign and COVAX is one of the first, uh, uh, one of the most important ways uh, through which we can uh, uh, we can help, and and this is ongoing. We hope uh, that by May uh, June, uh, uh, through the COVAX uh, initiative, uh, uh, Mozambique will receive 20% uh, uh, vaccines in sufficient uh, quantities to cover 20% of their population. But you can imagine how much overall this need to do so many things at the same time is a strain on uh, the national budget and this is a low income developing country so uh, the which as I mean as many countries uh, like this also contributed very or is contributing very little to the whole climate change but is really getting uh, very much uh, the burnt uh, of it. So uh, I'd like really to use this opportunity also to to thank you all and uh, and uh, hope uh, uh, really and encourage to support uh, in giving more visibility to uh, to uh, the needs uh, to to really uh, help Mozambique being more resilient and uh, for the whole international community to come together in a good multilateral effort to support Mozambique. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, uh, Ms. Collard. That was a great briefing. Um, yes, James? James Bayes from Al Jazeera. Can you hear me now? James Bayes from Al Jazeera. Can you hear me? Yes, now yes. Okay, James Bayes from Al Jazeera. Um, just like to get a little bit more on the response. Um, so, what do you actually need at the moment now in terms of supplies, in terms of aid workers coming into the country? Um, clearly, um, Mozambique, as you say, suffers a lot from these sort of things. I remember covering the flooding in the year 2000 there in Mozamb Mozambique. Um, so, one assumes you've got quite a lot of stuff pre positioned. And my other question is, in terms of res responding to this disaster, are there any, is there any impact and worries about the ongoing conflict in the country affecting the response? Uh, thank you very much. So in terms of what is uh, uh, needed uh, now, it's um, mainly tents. It is uh, emergency shelter. It is uh, blankets. It is really drinkable water that is uh, very much needed, hygiene. Hygiene is very important, uh, sanitation, um, equipment for uh, the, the face mask, the famous face masks, uh, uh, food is, uh, is now in need. And we need to look at the impact of all these, these floods and the water on the crops. Uh, harvest, uh, uh, harvest time is April. So now already we could see the plants growing and we need to see how much the water is going to stay because uh, uh, it may uh, also have a very devastating impact on the, on the harvest. Uh, these are the essential supplies that we see uh, already now as necessary. Of course, assessments are ongoing uh, still, and so the, the picture will become uh, uh, clearer. Um, we need also to rebuild schools uh, as soon as possible. The school year is to resume uh, in March. And uh, uh, this, uh, I mean, for, the, for many pupils, uh, they miss the 2019 school year. They miss the 2020 school year because of COVID. So it was really the opportunity to go back to school now. Having 400 classrooms uh, uh, affected is um, 
is very serious. We need to fix the health centers uh, as soon as possible uh, as well. Uh, we uh, need also to really uh, continue to support uh, in preventing gender-based violence. Uh, these are uh, always very uh, tense, very difficult situations uh, and, uh, and very packed. Um, in terms of aid workers, we are also, I mean, we have, uh, uh, we have a presence, a development presence uh, in the area. So uh, for now, we are responding with the capacity that we have uh, in country, but we will see in the next, uh, um, in the next uh, days what is required. In terms of search and rescue, this was uh, uh, identified as not required uh, this time. This was, uh, we had uh, a request to keep capacity capacity on standby, but then uh, what was uh, from, from the aerial pictures, uh, we understood that that was uh, not the case uh, this time. I would like to stress that preposition stocks are extremely low, but really very low. Um, in in uh, the UN system, as well as amongst the international NGOs and the local NGOs. Uh, the uh, supplies that are being provided now are to a large extent supplies from the Mozambican government. We are filling the gaps. Uh, some agencies had to uh, move stocks from uh, the north to respond to the center, but this is something really that we shouldn't do because we know uh, how big the requirement is already in the in the north to the respond to the complex uh, crisis. So we would rather appeal actually for additional resources and uh, to continue to um, respond also to the humanitarian response plan for the north. Thank you. Okay, um, we have a couple more questions, uh, Elena. Hi, hello. I am Elena from the Portuguese News Agency. Um, I know my my colleagues spoke to you uh, on Sunday, but I wanted to ask, uh, say that various organizations in the UN system has been very active and raising awareness and maybe raising money uh, for Mozambique. But um, are you still expecting um, a request from the government, from the Mozambican uh, government to activate all the resources that you can? And how is that interaction between government with the UN system? And uh, yeah, how can the, the government use its powers also to create more capacity for the hosting uh, communities, local communities? Thank you. Uh, as United Nations and the government, we are working really very closely, uh, very closely together uh, at all levels, be it here in Maputo, be it uh, in, uh, in the affected areas. Uh, and uh, I, I, I would like really to stress that the effort and the capacity and the resource, resources made available by the institutions are um, amazing. And they really show also a lot of progress in preparedness uh, uh, mechanisms um, for the country in front of disasters. Uh, um, we also see a big effort and we're basically using still the platforms that were created in the EDI response. So also private sector is, uh, is coming in. Uh, but it's simply that uh, we the, the resources are small. Even if we, we bring everything we have uh, um, available, but we have little... Uh, resources here in country for um, for this preparedness. We were launching, we launched a, a, a humanitarian response plan for the north because we didn't have these resources. The resources uh, the, to respond in the north, which is an ongoing uh, uh, challenge, and uh, the resources that were contributed uh, to respond to IDAI, of course, by now they have all been used up. They they were actually exhausted, uh, uh, more or less, yeah, uh, beginning 2020, April 2020. So we really, really need more resources. Let me just ask you also, uh, you said that there were 250,000 affected people and 18,000 internally displaced. Is that only about Mozambique or the other countries uh, in the region? This is Mozambique. This is Mozambique only. Thank you. Okay, um, Carla, and then we'll go to Sato and then Gloria. 
I believe it was last week, we had um, a presentation on the locust plagues that, and I had asked what was it that precipitated it, and they, the speaker said it was uh, multiple cyclones, and I was wondering, since you did mention cyclones here, whether there's any risk of that, uh, that resulting from the climate disaster. Um, over the uh, during the locust emergency in uh, in other parts of uh, East Africa, um, Mozambique was rather more to the margin, wasn't so affected. Um, I do not have the expertise now to be able to uh, anticipate with precision. Um, of course, there is an exposure. Um, it depends on, on many factors and certainly uh, the whole climate uh, uh, stress and the, the whole climate disruption uh, is, uh, is conducive. Uh, and um, I, I recall that a few months ago, uh, there was uh, there was an alert about uh, about uh, uh, locusts uh, problem. So um, certainly Mozambique is not immune from it. Um, we just I mean we we need to prepare and and be ready to respond to that as well. Just to say that until now uh, this problem has not been uh, out of proportions or of unmanageable proportions. Thank you. Okay, Sato, please. Yeah, thank you very much for uh, this briefing. Uh, <coughs> so a couple of questions. So uh, one question is simple. Uh, are you speaking from the Maputo or uh, from the Bela? I'm speaking from Maputo. Okay. Thank I you. was in Beira 10 days ago. Okay, thank you very much for uh, Madam Coordinator. So my question is a follow-up uh, on your comment. So do you believe the, uh, the global warming uh, become the accelerator of these extreme uh, climate? You know, Mozambique is a very long country. And uh, for several years by now, it has experienced uh, um, a very strong climate disruption. Uh, it has. It is experiencing uh, very strong, violent, devastating rains, and uh, in some parts of the country, and it is experiencing uh, a drought in the southern part of the country, and uh, this is not how it used to be, uh, and it is very severe because both uh, aspects affect uh, uh, food security and and affect the whole uh, uh, cycle. The cyclonic season uh, in 2019 was extraordinary in terms of violence. This year again, uh, the seawaters in the Mozambican channels are extremely hot. And this is facilitating this uh, creation of uh, uh, tropical storms and cyclones. Uh, in the, They go through Madagascar and then they form again in the in the Mozambican uh, channel. Uh, so this whole disruption experts connected to climate change, absolutely. Uh, one more question is, uh, you mentioned the, uh, the northern part of the uh, Cabo Delgado, uh, which is rampant of the violence and uh, causes uh, many more IDP people. So do you, are you worrying about uh, these, uh, the extreme uh, climate, uh, make the uh, violence more rampant in the northern part? The, the climate, I mean, when people that were displaced uh, uh, because of Cyclone Kenneth displaced then again because of the violence. Uh, these are people that, and then displaced, they can have displaced several times. So, so uh, the whole situation for populations in Cabo Delgado is, is really dramatic, is really extremely difficult. Uh, what we see, and, and 
I, I go to Cabo Delgado uh, very often, at least once a month. It's people that are immensely traumatized um, by the violence and the brutality that they have witnessed. They are immensely traumatized by the fact that they had to run away and abandon everything. Often they cannot even speak, and this is also for adults. They they have tears. They they cannot express the grief that they have in them. What they say, what and this is constant. What they say is. Uh, we want a place where we can restart our life anew. We want, a, and we need very simple things, very basic things. So it is not a, a language of hate. It is not a language of revenge. Uh, but what we reckon is that what we fear as humanitarian observing the situation, when we are with a host community, that already had a little water because there, there was water scarcity or because the infrastructure was uh, was uh, insufficient, and all in a sudden they have they are hosting sixty more people because these are big families that move together. They can uh, have this sharing for a certain period of time, but the tensions can emerge. If we do not come to support more, uh, or if uh, the, the institutions are trying to do their best also, this is why the institutions have their plans to help, help people relocate, it contributes also to uh, normalizing the situation and, and pacifying the situation and preventing uh, further stress and further tensions. Related to this is in particular the youth because we meet many students who were in high school. We meet many young men who had a job, uh, many women who were uh, self-reliant uh, because of their agriculture and supporting their families, and they have lost all of this. So they become immensely vulnerable. They become immensely vulnerable to to abuse and um, and also to to indoctrination. So this is where we see a sense of big emergency really to provide a, a stronger response and to help the Mozambican institutions. Uh, uh, because this is, we shouldn't forget, a low-income developing country. Thank you. Uh, Gloria? Mm -hmm. Is Gloria still online? Urban areas. Uh, in the urban areas of the country, do you have garbage disposal in any way, shape, or form because of the problem of sanitation? The problem of garbage is uh, is a big is a big problem. Uh, right uh, in these days, so there was coverage also on the national media about uh, uh, the the congestion. Of, of garbage in the city of Pemba. And this is uh, what creates uh, uh, concern and it's caused also by the city of Pemba, which is the capital of uh, the district of Cabo Delgado in the north of Mozambique. It had a population of 200,000 people. It hosts now 100,000 internally displaced more. So the population moved to 300,000. And these people are living in the, in the poorest area of, uh, of the town. And uh, the accumulation of garbage is, uh, is, is high. It, it's really a very big, it, it goes together with this uh, sudden change in the demography of the, of, the, um, of the town that also the services cannot cope. And this is uh, why we are saying that it is important also to support uh, um, a response uh, through the through resilience uh, and through a, a strengthened infrastructure, uh, because everything is related. Because if the garbage is not allowing the evacuation of the water, then the water stagnates, uh, and then we have cholera and we have more epidemics uh, in in an area 
which is already hosting um, uh, overpopulated and, and with very vulnerable people. So it is really a combination of uh, an emergency a resilience and the uh, and development challenge uh, uh, that the country is, is trying to, to address and that the country needs all, all support uh, in, in addressing. Okay, and we have one more question from Carla. Have, can you hear me? Yeah. You may already have addressed this, but what is the root cause of the conflict? I believe it's in the north that's causing this massive exodus, which it's very difficult to support in the rest of Mozambique. And from what you described, the enormous traumatization of, of the refugees, it sounds like something horrific. I, I, don't think there has been that much awareness of it. Do you, is this, the, is it terrorist the violence? Displacement. Yeah, the, the displacement uh, in the north uh, started uh, with uh, actually Cyclone Kenneth in uh, uh, 29 of April, 2019. This was the first cause of part of the displacement. And then uh, uh, there have been increasing attacks by, uh, by non-state armed groups, especially in the northeastern part of the province of Cabo Delgado, which is a top northern province of Mozambique. And these attacks are extremely uh, brutal and violent, and populations have been fleeing from these areas. These attacks have been intensifying very, very much in the second half of 2020. This is when also the number of internally displaced has uh, uh, increased uh, very fast uh, in the north of Mozambique. In Cabo Delgado, first, uh, within, uh, from, one, from these uh, districts in the northeast to the other districts in the province itself, this is where the large majority of the displacement is happening, and then also to the uh, other uh, two neighboring provinces uh, of uh, Nampula and, um, and Nyasa. Uh, just as an indication, last year at this time, the number of internally displaced was 90,000. Now we are at 500 and roughly 560,000, 570,000 internally displaced particular terrorist group that's causing the conflict in the north um, or this is is still under I mean there are many uh, points of view many that w what we prefer to say is that really there is need for more information before being able to say that definitively what is the nature what is the source of the problem okay um, I think that's it for questions. Thank you so much, Ms. Collard. It was a very useful briefing. And thank you all. I'll see you tomorrow.